You're watching Cartel TV and I'm Simone. Now make sure you subscribe to our channel. When I heard the legendary Land Cruiser was in the office, I just had to take it for a quick review. Now this won't be a full comprehensive review. We'll do one of those for you later in the year. For now, I just wanted to take a look at what all the hype is about around this seven-seater off-road monster. So let's get straight into it. For my first impressions of the design, it's the front grille that really appears to be the most different. The grille looks more modern and simple in a good way when comparing it to the 200 series. They've added some dark cladding around the grille, which which I think helps emphasize it more. Hello, I'm here. The bottom lip is also more minimal and clean, which again helps pull your focus to the grill, which is what matters most. Again, not really a revolutionary difference for the front design, but enough to keep it current. As for the rest of it, well... Side and rear profiles of the LC300 aren't really too noticeably different from the LC200. It's not easy to be ambitious when you're trying to maximize the internal space, but still, a little bit of design flair surely could have been found somehow. Now moving on to the engine, here in Oz we get the one choice. It's a 3.3 litre V6 twin turbo diesel. It gives you 227 kilowatts of power and a whopping 700 newton metres of torque from between 1600 and 2600 revs. Combined fuel consumption is listed as 8.9 litres per 100 kilometres. Now we know that there's going to be some disappointment for some that there's no longer a V8 version on offer. This is a move from Toyota working towards having all of its vehicles under the carbon limits by 2025. They figured that with a V8, that would just make it too hard. But despite this little gripe, the numbers show that people are still lapping up the LC300. So far this year alone, Toyota have delivered 341 LC300s in South Australia and Northern Territory combined, and sales are over double what Toyota is currently delivering. For the drive, you notice straight away that it's way smoother than the LC200, and that's because of the new 10-speed auto transmission. The new intelligent transmission improves the responsiveness and fuel economy while reducing noise, vibration, and harshness. That transmission combined with the new engine is one of the reasons the fuel economy has improved against the outgoing model. It also means this cabin is actually super quiet as well as being comfortable. Inside, this thing is massive. I feel like I'm flying first class. I'll have another hot face towel, please. Cool little things have also been done to improve the infotainment experience in general. Like pressing this little tab on the screen will change the side where these options appear. This makes it easier for either the driver or the front passenger to reach what they need to. Also, check out the glove box, which can open from either side, like this. Or like that. See? Well thought through convenience. While the interior is huge and comfortable, it still doesn't necessarily feel modern in its design. It's things like the wood grain look and the instrument cluster with a combination of analog and digital elements, which just feels as if Toyota went for traditional over modern. I'll save backseat impressions and more details on the interior for when we do a full review, so stay tuned for that. Plenty of cool safety tech has been added, like the Toyota Safety Sense, which is now across the range and includes pre-collision safety system with pedestrian day and night and cyclist day detection, all-speed active cruise control, auto high beam, lane departure alert with brake to steer, road sign assist for certain speed signs only. Other safety features specific to this VX model are lane trace assist or LTA with steering wheel vibration, emergency steering assist, rear parking support brake, four camera multi-terrain monitor MTM with panoramic view monitor and vehicle dynamics integrated management. Okay so I'll list all of the Land Cruiser 300 models on offer and what you can can expect to pay for them. The recommended retail price for a GX starts at $89,990. The GXL comes in at $101,790. This VX will set you back $113,990. A Sahara costs $131,190 and the GR Sport is $137,790. And finally, the Sahara ZX tops them all off at $138,790. We have the VX here and while the price is pretty high, once you factor in its size, capability, and the fact that there's nothing like it on the market, it explains why it's an easy choice for so many. Okay, well that was just a quick take on the LC300, and obviously this off-roading legend does deserve a more detailed review, but don't worry, we are going to give you one, but do write in and let us know what you'd specifically like to see in our upcoming review of the LC300. And we'll give some shout outs to the best questions in that video. Thanks for watching Cartel TV, and you'll see me in my next review.